For this project, our goal is to create our own algorithms for different shapes, a square, a triangle, and a circle, let's say. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, I'm going to start by decomposing this and say the types of things that I need. You know, so first of all, I'm going to need a uh, create a sprite uh, that will draw my shape. In fact, now that I've said that, I think I'm going to go ahead and replace the sprite that's here and grab a new sprite. I'm going to choose a new sprite. I'll type in something like pencil, and there's a pencil. I think that's good for drawing. It's a little bit big, so let's change the size to about 40% of that size. I like that size. Um, and now I'll go ahead and add the comment on here. Create my sprite that will draw my shape. So that's the first thing that I needed to do. Uh, and then the next thing I need to do is, um, let's say when I click the flag, um, what I want to do is draw several different shapes. So in order to do that, I'm going to need to create a my block uh, for a square, triangle, and a circle. So uh, that's pretty much it right now. Let's go ahead and see what we need to do for that. So we've already got our sprite that's going to draw our shape. That'll be our pencil down here. When we click the flag, we want to draw several different shapes. So let's go to uh, events and when the flag is clicked. Now what we need to do is we need to have the shapes that we can draw. Uh, so first off, we need to go get our drawing tool. So on the bottom left hand side, we can add extensions. And there's lots of different extensions that you can see here. We'll use some of these throughout the course of this semester. The one we're interested in right now is this pen, draw your own sprites. So the first thing that we're interested in when we're gonna draw is let's erase what's already there. So we'll go ahead and say erase all. Uh, and then what we wanna do is we wanna go ahead and uh, put our, uh, our pen wherever we want to draw the shape. So we need to go ahead and create my blocks for these shapes. So let's go to my blocks. And let's make a block. Let's start with a square. I think that'll be the easiest. And we have some different options. I'm not going to go over these options right now, but you can actually uh, give different variables to these uh, blocks as you're creating them. Um, just right now, I'm just going to go ahead and create a, a common square. So we'll say this is a square. We're going to define what makes up a square. This is where we get to make our own algorithm for a square. So uh, if I were to say, well, if I want to create a square, that's uh, repeating, drawing a line four times and turning it 90 degrees. So I'm going to go to repeat and grab my repeat. Since it's a square, I'm going to change that to four times. And I want to basically move my pen a certain distance. Let's say I want to move it about uh, 50 pixels. And then we want to turn 90 degrees each time. If I do that uh, four times, Hopefully I'll end up in the same spot. So like always, I like to test as I go along. We've just created our own algorithm for a square. Um, let's go ahead and test this and see what happens. So I click on it and it looks like nothing's happening. Why do you suppose that is? Well, the reason is so far we've just defined our algorithm, but we've never actually used it. Uh, in programming, you often heard this as calling a function or calling your algorithm. Uh, so in this case, we never called the square block. We've clicked the flag, erased everything that's there, and gotten the square, but we haven't done anything with it. So let's go ahead and call that block. So I'm going to go back to my blocks, and you'll notice now I have my own block called square that I've defined. This is my own algorithm. So now if I try it out, well, I saw that the pen uh, or pencil did something, but I can't see anything. And the reason for that is because my pen isn't down. This is like it's a piece of paper. I need to actually put the pen down. So I'm going to go ahead and put the pen down. And now I'm going to draw it again. Uh, I need to actually put the pen down before I call my square function. And now you can see I've got this uh, blue color, uh, bluish purplish color, and it will draw it. And it'll draw it in the same place every time. So let's actually create our own algorithm for uh, going to a different spot, sort of lifting up the pencil, go to a different spot, and then putting the pencil down, and maybe choosing a different color. Uh, so we can do that each time. So I'm going to go ahead and make another new block, and I'll just call this one uh, Reset Pencil, or something like this. And I'm going to hit OK on this Reset of my pencil. 
And I'm going to right click and add a comment to this uh, to indicate what it should do. I'm going to say it should uh, lift up the pencil, uh, go to random position, and then um, choose a new color and put the pencil down. This will be useful because this is one of those things that I'll probably end up repeating. This is a, an opportunity for me to look and say, oh, I'm, I'm repeating this. Here's a pattern that's happening. So let's uh, find pen up. Here it is. We have our pen up. Now we're going to go to a random position. So if I go to motion, there's a block that is actually go to random position. And I don't care where on the stage I go this time. So I'm just going to make it, leave it as random position. I'm going to choose a new color, so that would be back with my pen. So I'm going to set the pen. I'll change the pen color by 10. How about that? In fact, just for fun, I'll go to Operators and pick a random color. Uh, and I'll change it somewhere between, uh, let's say, 5 and 15. I'm not sure how that will change things, but uh, we'll get some different variation of color each time. So I've done three of the things. I need to put the pencil down, so I'm going to go back to my pen tools put the pen down and now um, now I've got this reset pencil algorithm so if I click on the flag you can see everything is still happening in the same place every time the nice thing is now that I've got these different blocks I can call the blocks within the blocks so I've defined square uh, as going and uh, drawing in a certain spot well why don't I call um, reset pencil inside of square so that square goes to a different location every time that I do something so I can see the square is going to a different location uh, and drawing that square every time I'm doing something different great so I've got the square and I'm getting a different color different location let's create uh, two more algorithms let's create an algorithm uh, for a triangle so I'm gonna go in here I'll call this thing a triangle and I'm gonna ignore these three right now um, now a triangle is really similar to um, a square, only I've got three sides, right? So first I'm going to go ahead and use the reset pencil uh, block that I've already created. I'm going to go to control and grab the repeat block. I'm just going to repeat it three times. And let's go ahead and go to motion and grab a move. And I'll move it 50 steps. And turning. Um, now, if I want to make an equilateral triangle, uh, it's 60 degrees on the inside of the triangle, so I'll say 60 degrees. Let me show you what's going to happen when I do that. If I go to my blocks, now I have triangle. I'm going to go ahead and draw a square and a triangle when I click the green flag now and see what happens. So my triangle doesn't really look like a triangle. In fact, it looks like half of a hexagon. The reason for that is because I actually need to measure the outside angle and that's how much my pencil is turning uh, because it's turning from the outside. So if I've got 60 degrees, I need to subtract 60 from the 180 degrees, which would mean I need 120 degrees. So if I run that now, I can see I'm getting these uh, perfectly formed equilateral triangles for the most part. Sometimes there's an error. I'm not quite sure what that is going on there. Um, so I'm getting these triangles in here. The nice thing about defining it in a single place is I was able to only make uh, the changes once uh, and now it's reflected wherever a triangle is called in the code. So I could actually, I could call triangle two, three, four times, right, if, as I do this. And I can draw a couple of different triangles. And the nice thing is if I want to make a change in this shape, I can change it one spot and now it's reflected every time that that code is called. It's no longer a triangle, so I'm going to put that back to 120. Um, let's do one more. Let's define a circle and see what a circle would look like. So I'm going to make a new block, call it a circle. And this time I am going to add an input. Um, I have the choice of adding a number or a text input, a Boolean, which is a true or a false, or a text, which is a label to this. I'm going to go ahead and add a uh, number or a text to this one and hit OK. Now. Circle, I'm defining a circle, it's similar to these others, but it's also asking for a specific piece of input at this time. And that's what that does. If you'll notice up here, it says circle, and it's got this empty area for an argument or a variable, as we've seen before, the pill shape is a variable. Uh, so what I'm gonna use that for is I'm gonna use that to vary the size of my circle. So um, circles uh, are a little bit more, uh, 
complex than these others. I'm going to reset the pencil just like I've done on all these others. And then I'm going to put a repeat in again. And uh, this time what I'm going to do on the repeat is I'm going to repeat it, let's say, I could go 360 times uh, because there's 360 degrees in a circle. I would have to move only one degree each time. That's probably a bit of overkill. I can actually probably get away with just moving 60 times and moving six degrees each time. Uh, it's such a small screen, it's going to be negligible for our eyes to be able to see that difference. So I'm going to go back to uh, move. I'm going to tell it how many steps to move. And I'm also going to turn that, like I said, six degrees. So that would be 60 times six gives us 360 in our circle. Uh, now, the one thing that I do need to do is I need to handle the fact that I did ask for an input. And this is kind of like a vending machine now. If I don't put the coin or the input into the machine, then the machine's not going to work, right? So this block that I've created, this function that I've created, is a little bit different than the others in that it requires an input, whereas the others uh, are statically giving it a value. So let's say what I'm going to do is I'm going to say define this uh, number or text, uh, and I'm going to move that many degrees each time, or that much distance. Now, at the default of 10 right now, you can see that that 10 drew a rather large circle. So I'm just going to grab this number of text right from the definition and put it right to where the move is. Now, when I call this move, it's going to need to know how far to move. And you'll notice if I'm clicking this right now, um, I'm not actually calling circle. So I'm going to put circle in here. When I try and run this, um, you can see it's running the circle, but it doesn't quite know where to go because I didn't give it a number of text. So I can give it some value right now. Let's say, let's make this one 3. Uh, and then I'll make another circle and give it a value of uh, 10. And then I'll run another circle and give it a value of, let's say, uh, 6. And we'll see what those different circles are going to look like. It takes uh, my computer a little bit longer to run a circle. And when it runs off the edge of the screen, Scratch doesn't quite like that. It, it pushes that sprite right up against the screen. So that's why those are messed up there. But you can see when uh, it is able to run unimpeded, it's able to uh, make a perfect circle. So I could try that again and see if I get circles in the middle of the screen, in which case they end up being perfect circles. Uh, when my sprite gets impeded on the edge, it kind of messes up what that circle drawing is like. Um, so there you have it. This is a way of using algorithms to create your own uh, functions, your own blocks. It's a very powerful tool. Once you realize that you can define your own blocks, you can call them as many times as you want in as many places as you want. Uh, so it's a great use of all of the things that we've been learning so far in terms of breaking down the problem, seeing patterns. Uh, so for example, in this case of Reset Pencil, I saw that I was going to have to reset the pencil every time I wanted to draw a new shape. So that's where I said, hey, I'm going to create my own algorithm for that um, and uh, have my own block as I do that. So now that you know how to create your own blocks, go out there and figure out how you can incorporate this into your code to make your life a lot easier and have to do a lot less coding.